Hey guys, so in my last video I threw out a few different ideas for future videos and quite a few of you seemed interested in finance. So I put together a few notes and I'll be sharing them in this video. Um, from a visual standpoint, this is going to be pretty basic. It's just going to be me talking. So if finance is your thing or you're interested in seeing a breakdown of the numbers, definitely stick around. Either way, thanks so much for being here. And if you're new to the channel and not subscribed, I'm Christian Chafer. I'm an outdoor adventure photographer and I've been living on the road full time for three years. First in my SUV and now in my converted Ram Promaster. Okay, so the goal of this video is to share my monthly expenses of living on the road versus monthly expenses of living in an apartment. So you can get an idea of what costs to expect and also how much you might potentially save by living on the road. Obviously, I can only speak to my own personal experience, so this is not meant to represent what the average road lifer's expenses might look like. Every situation will be different, and one of the great things about road life is you can easily customize it to not only fit your lifestyle, but also your budget. First things first, living on the road does cost money. It is not free. Having a good amount of savings or a remote form of income is definitely essential. I'm a freelance photographer, so both my income and my expenses vary wildly from month to month. Um, one month I might have four contracts and the next month I might have none. Same goes for expenses. One month I might be investing heavily in camera gear or a new laptop and the next month might be relatively low key. So I'm going to be including my recurring business related expenses just for the sake of accuracy, but keep in mind those might not apply to you. I'm going to be going over each expense item by item and as we go along I'll be showing a comparison chart of how much it costs for SUV life versus van life versus life in my old apartment. Also just in case you guys see me looking over here it's because I have my laptop up with numbers listed just so I don't get those wrong. Um, Alright, so I'm going to start with insurance, everybody's favorite, and we'll begin with vehicle insurance. So when I had my SUV um, and I was living out of my Xterra, my insurance was $75 a month. When I got the van, my insurance was bumped up to $167 a month. Um, but keep in mind that insures the build, insures the van itself, and it also insures any of my non-business related personal property. Also, that rate is pretty high. So Keep in mind that if you have an older vehicle, it's going to be a lot less than how much mine is. Um, when I lived in my apartment, I still had to have a vehicle and I had my SUV. So my insurance, my vehicle insurance while living in the apartment was still $75 a month. Okay, next is camera insurance. So I pay $350 a year to cover my cameras, my lenses, and my laptop. And this is the same whether I lived in my SUV, my van, or my apartment. Renter's insurance. So I just mentioned that my current RV vehicle insurance covers my personal property in the van. Well, when I was living in my SUV and also the apartment, I had to have renter's insurance to cover my personal property and that cost $25 a month. Phone plus internet. So I pay $55 a month for my iPhone and that's because I have the Apple loan program so that I can upgrade my phone every time a new one comes out. And for unlimited, talk, text, and data with Verizon, I pay $80 a month. Um, but that's always been the same, whether I was in my apartment, SUV, or the van. The only difference is when I was in the apartment, I also had a monthly Wi-Fi bill of $40. Utilities. So this will largely depend on where you live and how big your house or apartment is. For me personally, my last apartment was roughly $140 a month for utilities. In the van, everything is solar powered, so I don't have any monthly expenses there. My main utility expenses are water, laundry, and propane when I'm living on the road. For water, I usually just fill up at state campgrounds. I have an annual state parks pass for Washington, which is $35 a year, and we'll factor that in. Um, otherwise, I might fill up at the grocery store, which for 10 gallons of fresh water is about $2.50. So we'll round up and say about $7 per month for water. I will throw in another $10 per month for local and campground showers. Um, I usually just shower at the gym, but and we'll add in that membership fee in just a little bit. But when there isn't an Anytime Fitness location nearby, I might buy like a monthly pass at a recreation or aquatic center. For example, Jackson, Wyoming or Moab, Utah. I did that this past year for both of those places. And there's also, the occasional campground shower that's just more convenient than 
you know, driving to the nearest gym. When it comes to emptying my gray water tank and my toilet, I usually just do this at state park campgrounds as well. Sometimes there's a $5 fee and other times it's free if you're staying the night. Most times I can just find a gas station or rest stop that has an RV dump for free. So this is at most $10 per month now that I live in the van. When I lived in the SUV, I didn't have a toilet or a gray water tank, so there was no expense there. For propane, the price is very minimal. Um, when I was living in an SUV, I would go through those one pound propane tanks every like two to three weeks. So at most it was $7 per month, we'll say. Now that I'm in the van, I just got an 11 pound propane tank. And based on the numbers that I've looked up, it's only gonna cost like a dollar per month based on my usage and how cheap it is to buy propane by the gallon. On the road, laundry costs about $8 every time I do a full wash and dry, so, and I do it every like two weeks, so that's about $16 per month for both the SUV and the van. And in the apartment, I had a washer and dryer, so that was wrapped up into the utility bill. So for the SUV, $40 a month. For the van, $44 a month. And for the apartment, it was $140 a month for utilities. Gas. Okay, so this one was really interesting to work out. Um, I assumed that my gas bill would be much higher now than it was when I was living in my apartment, but that actually wasn't the case. Um, when I lived in an apartment, I would drive crazy long distances for, say, a week-long photo shoot, but then I'd have to turn around and drive all the way back. And when I live in the van and when I lived in the SUV, I tend to travel really slowly and I very rarely backtrack. So there was a small difference, but not nearly as much as I expected. I've put about 27,000 miles on my van in the past two years, which works out to be about 14,000 miles per year. Um, but in my SUV, the last year I was living in my apartment, I actually put 14,875 miles on my SUV. Um, so that was higher even. And the year before that, while I was in the apartment, I only put 8,000 miles on, but I did live overseas for two months and I also spent quite a bit of time traveling by plane. So all of that to say, the difference isn't that big. Um, if you aren't someone who takes a lot of road trips already, then this might be a big expense adjustment for you. But if you're someone who already road trips pretty often, then you might be surprised at how little this amount changes. The amount of money I spend on gas varies greatly depending on how much I'm moving around. But if we take the total amount of money I spent in 2020 on gas uh, and divide it by 12, I spent an average of $195 per month on gas. If we take the average of two years in my apartment, which would be roughly 11,500 miles, um, then that would average out to be $160 per month. And if you're wondering why I know how much I've spent on gas down to the cent every year, it's because I have to track those expenses for my business. I promise I don't do it for kicks. It's because I have to. <laughs> Okay, vehicle maintenance. This one is a little tricky because I bought my van brand new with a 100,000 mile warranty and I haven't had any issues, haven't had to pay for any repairs yet, and oil changes are relatively inexpensive. I paid $155 last year for oil changes on the van. Um, I was also really lucky with my Nissan Xterra, never had any major issues. Again, I just had to pay for oil changes, which worked out to be about the same. Um, I did have to get my tires replaced once, which was about a thousand dollars, but that actually happened when I lived in my apartment. So I'm just going to say they're all about the same. They work out to be about $13 per month in my experience. Obviously, as time goes on, that number will definitely change as my vehicle gets older. And if you're going to buy an older vehicle, definitely factor in uh, a significant amount for vehicle maintenance because you just things will inevitably need to be replaced. I have friends who have paid upwards of $4,000 on, you know, some unexpected transmission issue. And yeah, it's something that you really want to be prepared for. But that said, you know, like if you want to mitigate those kinds of unexpected repairs to your vehicle, buying a brand new one is one way to do that. And so for me, I lived in my SUV longer than I needed to so that I could save up money to buy something brand new. Food. Okay, so for food, I spend anywhere from $200 to $250 per month. This includes groceries and occasionally eating out. This is basically the same whether I live in an apartment or on the road because especially in the van, I have a stove, I have a fridge, and I can cook in the van the same way I would in a house. That said, I will say food was slightly cheaper when living in an apartment simply because I knew where to go, I knew where to get the good deals. I wouldn't see, um, you know, price increases because I'm rolling through a tourist town. And also I could buy in bulk. So you might save a little bit of money there. And on the road, I spend a little more time in coffee shops. So we'll say $250 
per month for SUV and van and $200 per month for the apartment. For anyone out there that thinks $200 a month is low, keep in mind that I'm only feeding one person and I rarely eat out. Also, I have a really small fridge, so I rarely, if ever, waste food. I only buy what I'm gonna eat. And if you don't already know, Grocery Outlet is like van life mecca for quality organic foods on the cheap. Gym membership. So the gym is where I shower. So this is a pretty essential road life expense for me. And I pay $39 a month for an Anytime Fitness membership. And they have locations nationwide and international, and they tend to have them in cool places like small towns near national parks and BLM land and stuff like that. So it's really convenient. And when I was in the apartment, um, my apartment building had a gym, plus I had a shower. So that's an additional expense that's pretty unique to just road life. $39 a month. Why did I say that again? <laughs> Next is my storage unit. This is not a necessary expense, but I only pay $26 a month and it was really helpful to have a storage unit when I first moved out because it was less stressful to have to decide what to keep and what to get rid of. It's a really small unit. It allows me to keep seasonal gear and like some heirlooms from my grandfather. So I did not have that expense when living in an apartment. Private mailbox. So this is another expense that applies only to road life. Obviously when I lived in my apartment, uh, the mail came for free or you know, you pay rent. So this runs me about $17 per month. So the next one I want to talk about are hotels, Airbnbs, and campgrounds. So this one varies greatly. Um, in 2020, I spent a few thousand dollars to stay in an Airbnb um, for two whole months to quarantine for the pandemic during the first lockdown. And that was definitely unusual. By comparison, in 2019, I spent $187 total for the whole year. Um, in 2018, I spent $800. So typically I'm trying to camp for free. Like that's why I have the van. It's because I wanna get away from cities and people. So I camp on BLM, I camp on national forests. So this expense is generally pretty low. I'm not gonna count 2020 since it was a weird year, but if we take the average of 2018 and 2019, I spent about $500 per year on hotels, Airbnbs, and campgrounds. Um, to be honest, I didn't save that much by living in an apartment because when I would go out on a trip, I didn't have everything set up. I didn't have the gym membership to shower. I would I would basically just book a hotel or an Airbnb. So the last year I lived in an apartment, I spent $400. So the savings was pretty minimal. It worked out to be about $33 per month while living in an apartment and $42 per month while living on the road. Next up, subscriptions and software. This will be some of the business related stuff that I wanted to throw in there. Um, it's across the board the same for SUV, van life, um, and living in an apartment cost me about a hundred dollars a month and I'm talking about like Adobe Creative Cloud, um, mobile editing services, cloud storage, Squarespace website hosting, that sort of thing, business emails, but I just wanted to throw it out there because if you are thinking about having a remote income while living on the road, those are expenses that you're probably gonna run into. Parking, okay, so at my old apartment, um, it was an additional hundred dollars per month for a parking space. On the road, I don't pay for parking hardly at all. Um, I avoid big cities in general, which is where you're normally gonna get charged for parking. Um, the only time I really have to pay is if I'm gonna get on a plane and go travel overseas and I need to park my vehicle long-term, but I run into those expenses with my vehicle and a house anyway, unless I'm gonna Uber back and forth. So to be honest, I would only say about $5 per month um, while living on the road, and even that's like a lot more than I would normally spend. <laughs> okay, taxes. So this is pretty much the same, whether you live in an SUV, a van, or an apartment. I pay federal income tax, self-employment tax, um, city business tax, and also Washington state business and occupation tax. I won't quantify these because I'd basically be disclosing my income, but I think it's important to point this out because living on the road does not mean that you do not pay taxes. <laughs> Even if it can feel and be difficult to figure out without a permanent address, it's your responsibility to figure out how to pay the man. All right, rent. So obviously this is going to vary greatly depending on where you live, how big your place is, and whether or not you have roommates. For me, um, my last apartment cost $2,600 per month. And as for the SUV and van, I bought them both outright, so I don't have monthly payments. 
that's really going to skew these numbers, but it's still pretty interesting to see just how much money I have saved by living on the road versus if I had stayed in my former apartment for these past three years. Also keep in mind, I lived for 14 months in my 2008 SUV, which you could probably buy today for like five to $6,000. You absolutely do not need to spend tens of thousand dollars on a brand new van or a build or any of that. Um, an SUV camper setup can actually be really comfortable and I miss it a lot sometimes. I miss the four x four capability. I miss that, you know, like I had even less stuff with me and I could basically camp anywhere. So just keep that in mind. Good morning. So I ran out of light the other day, so I'm just gonna pick up where I left off. Hopefully I've given you like a overview of my main expenses. There are a few things that I've left out, but I'll cover those in a minute, and yeah, here's where we've ended up. So if I had stayed living in that same apartment for the last three years, I would have spent roughly $131,400. By contrast, my expenses, if living in an SUV for the last three years, would be $35,676, and with the van, it'd be $38,232. So by choosing to live in a vehicle for the past three years, rather than my former apartment, I've saved $94,162. Even if we reduced the rent by half to $1,300 a month, I still would have spent roughly $84,600. That's a potential $49,000 savings over three years, which is a pretty good amount. Um, but of course, we still have to take into account the cost of the SUV and the van itself. So the SUV was about $7,000, and the van plus the entire conversion was roughly $70,000. With my original rent amount of $2,600, this van has already completely paid for itself, and I've saved some money along the way. Even if we cut the rent in half to $1,300 a month, I'd only be six months out from paying the entire van off, which is pretty good, especially because right now camper vans are pretty popular, and not only are they pretty much retaining their resale value, but some of them are even selling at a profit. Those are my baseline numbers. I left out additional expenses like health insurance, insurance, clothes, toiletries, hobbies, that sort of thing, mostly because those are largely dependent on you, your lifestyle, your personality, and they tend to be the same whether you're living on the road or in a house or an apartment. Although one thing I will say is since moving onto the road, I tend to spend less money on stuff in general just because I don't have space for it. So let's say I'm shopping, I see a really cute jacket, rather than be like, okay, I'm going to buy this jacket, I think, wait, do I really want to get rid of something else I love inside the van just to make space for this jacket? So as a consequence, I end up buying things that I really only love or that I absolutely need. And whereas when I was in an apartment, I would collect all kinds of stuff that I didn't really need and ultimately never used. So I would say in general, I just spend less money on stuff. With my income and all other personal expenses thrown into the mix, I've been able to put away over $150,000 in the three years I've lived on the road which is money I can now put toward buying land and eventually building my own place to call home. Not paying rent or utilities or any of the other things I've mentioned has really added up over time. All right, so final words. Let's say you're interested in pursuing this lifestyle and you're asking yourself, but can I afford it? First of all, it's a really good idea to have some money put away. This is especially true if you're gonna be hitting the road in an older vehicle because you just never know what kind of issues you might run into when it comes to vehicle maintenance. Besides that, there's the cost of food, gas, oil, water, propane, health insurance, vehicle insurance, vehicle maintenance, monthly subscriptions, all the things we touched on in this video. So you definitely wanna have some money put aside or at least have some remote income so that you have money coming in while you're on the road. When I moved into my SUV three years ago, I had $30,000 in the bank. You don't need that much, but that's what I was comfortable with. It was enough to deal with any vehicle maintenance issues I ran into, which by the way, four months after moving into my SUV, I totaled it and I did have to completely replace my vehicle. Um, and you know, it was enough money that if I didn't like road life, I had enough to put down on first and last month's rent and be comfortable for a little while while I tried to figure things out. Second, lower your overhead. So if you have credit card debt, student loan debt, any kind of debt really, I would encourage you to just look at your expenses, look at your lifestyle, see if there's a way that you can bring those expenses down and eliminate that debt altogether. I have kind of an extreme rule for myself when it comes to buying things. If I can't buy it up front, I don't buy it. And obviously I've never bought a house, so I'm sure that will be different, but it has worked well for me. It serves as a motivator to work hard 
hard toward my financial goals just so I can buy things like this fan without, you know, the burden of debt following me around. This might mean delaying your plans to hit the road a little bit longer while you, say, still have a steady paycheck coming in. Um, anything that will allow you to save up some money to rely on when you're on the road. Um, you could look at your expenses and see where you might cut monthly subscriptions, maybe quit buying lattes in the morning, um, cook instead of eating out, and also just buy less in general. And if you are going to buy stuff, consider buying stuff that's high quality, that's going to last a long time, and that you really love. Third, I suggest you keep a budget. Track your expenses, know exactly what's coming in and what's coming out, and like I said, take a look at it and see how you might adjust to live more comfortably or less comfortably if you're trying to save up money. Fourth, I would suggest that you consider diversifying your revenue streams to include passive income. Passive income is the ultimate goal if you want to live on the road because it's basically money that just shows up in your bank account without you having to actively work. Um, and yeah, that's something I'm working toward myself and YouTube ad revenue is a part of that now. So I have you to thank for that. So thank you. If you guys found this video helpful, it'd mean a lot if you give it a thumbs up and be sure to subscribe to my channel below. Um, I put out van life content, travel and photography content. And also I'd love to connect over on Instagram. My handle's at Christian Schaefer and over there I share photography work and I also keep you guys updated more often on my travel. If you guys are interested in gear recommendations for hiking, camping, um, photography, or van life essentials, check out the link to my gear page in my caption below. Uh, I get a small kickback every time I use those links so I really appreciate your support. And I think that my next video will be about um, an updated van tour. So stay tuned for that and I will see you guys next time.